give you guys a little bit of a pig update. Um, so it's been exactly one week since we've uh, we've had these guys here, and they they seem to be settling down. They're doing well. They're thriving, one would say. And they haven't dug out. I don't know if that's uh, you know going to be the case, but uh, we'll just monitor it and see if they're going to dig out. They seem to be very content. I got some leftovers from last night's uh, pad thai and some previous nights chicken nuggets, and we got some eggshells in there, as recommended by the comments. And we got some blackberries and some cauliflower in there. Let's see. Let's see what they if they like that. What's your favorite bit in there? You like the pad thai? Is it the chicken nuggets? I think they like the pad thai best. Next time I'm gonna give them a little bit of entertainment. And by entertainment, I'm gonna give them a little tire swing. Got some bits and bobs. I got some old chain from a uh, garage door company. They they get a lot of these and they just kind of like, you want them, they're, they're not welded, so they're not that useful. I don't think a, a pig's gonna open the weld. Put my washer order in. Got these guys from Princess Auto. We're all set. There, if they want to play with it, they can usually bonk it and push it around and scratch at it and bite it. I guess that's the idea, to keep them occupied, keep them entertained. So they've got, uh, they've got the water down pat now. They don't seem to chew on it. And they've made themselves a nice little mud hole there, which they tend to roll around in it to keep cool. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the pigs. One week in, they seem to be happy, healthy, and entertained, right? Walls haven't blown out yet and they haven't dug out yet. <laughs> Well, that tire seems to be providing, you know, entertainment. Hours of entertainment, perhaps. I don't know, they make it bored of it. <laughs> Part of the everyday tasks around here is, you know, tending to the animals. Got to feed the pigs, got to feed the chickens, and uh, part of feeding the chickens is moving the chickens to fresh ground. So the chicken tractor is built in such a way that you just hook it up to the tractor and pull. Brings them to the fresh grass that gives them more opportunity to eat some bugs and some crickets and whatever else they can find in the grass and it's also better for them because they get to not be standing in their own poop all day so that's that's important it cuts down on your workload because you don't have to clean the pen out not to mention that i think by giving them new grass it makes happier chickens happy healthy chicken you can see the progression of grass and soiled area as you move the chicken tractor so it starts off really soiled and it gets progressively less soiled as the days go by as soon as it starts to rain that grass just perks up i think it's the nitrogen and the chicken poop that helps the grass grow. And then you just kind of start it all over again. So you just kind of go one way and then you turn around and you come on back. This is the joys of having a tin roof! When it rains, it's so relaxing. We're in the middle of a thunderstorm. As you can see, our roof is working very well. Even where our flashing is. You can actually, you can see it right there through the skylight. That's pretty cool. You can see we have a slight slope to the front. That's a great place for a rain barrel, I think. Always have water when we need it. Ideally, it probably should have been sloped to the other side, but live and learn. The sky has opened up. It's much quieter in here. What do you think, Chris? Very peaceful. Isn't it? Rain on a tin roof. Thank God, is that, is that nice? It's nice and relaxing in here. Yeah. Here in a tent, it'd be slightly, it would be slightly more miserable. We're just peeling bark. Nice rainy day project. What do, you, what do you think? What do you think of this job? 
it, it's um it's warm it's warm <laughs> you can't see it but dawn's glasses are fogging up very humid it's very it's very humid today it's uh I don't know, about 30 degrees and about 92% humidity, and uh, it's sticky, and uh, we're peeling bark. This is this is one of the processes, I guess, which should have been done when the tree was originally died, which uh, these trees were always standing dead, so the bark has kind of laminated itself to the trunk. Um, when, a, when a fresh log, when a tree is fell and it's fresh, generally speaking, the bark comes off relatively easy, but these were dead standing logs, so the bark has, has amalgamated itself to the trunk itself so we're, we're kind of peeling off the bark in anticipation for chinking it's chinking day we even got chris here chris is over here where are you it's too hot for it's a hat too hot for a hat look he's he's the rare opportunity swimming <sighs> and when it's too sweaty hot it, for a hat it's gross like we're not used to this like literally what was it a week and a couple of days it was last not this friday but the previous friday it was snowing here and now it is 30 degrees and 100 percent the humidity is going up as I talk. <laughs> it's hot. So our goal today is to get rid of the bark that's still on the logs in order to get our chinking to stick because we want to be able to put the chinking directly to the log. So that's what we're going to do. Or we're just going to melt. Oh. guys i figured i'll bring you guys up to speed on what we're doing the task at hand today is we're going to start installing a metal lath into the cracks because we're going to start chinking now i've done some research i've watched some videos and i'm basing it upon other youtube videos primarily the outsider he's got a really cool cabin he's building and he used metal metal lath and he used roofing nails along the base of the metal lath and he used ardox nails up at the top to hold his lath in. Now I thought that was a great idea and I thought, you know what? I always like to base what I do on other people's experiences and maybe build upon that. So I, I thought, you know what? Let's use that as a, as a starting point and see if we can improve on it. So I've developed my own little system on how to install this lath, maybe make it a little less tedious because it is, it is really tedious. We've done we've done two strips and uh, it hasn't taken that, lo as, that, that long because we've used some modern technologies. Is it that time of day again? It's cool tool time. This is the modern cool tool. This is a roofing nailer. It takes coils of roofing nails. You just install them inside there. You click them shut. It allows you to fire roofing nails at breakneck speed. And it's going to help us put our lath in today. So that guy there, cool tool, roofing nailer. It also nails in shingles. Got the chicken inspectors down here. What do you guys think? Or ladies? What well, ladies? Ladies, what do you think? Got any eggs for me? Got any eggs for lunch? What do you think? They don't care about chinking. Hmm. Although it's suspicious that there's one not here. There's uh, there's there's six egg layers and uh, there's only five down here. I wonder if the other one's the other one's probably suntan in the bush or something. Hey, where's the other one? He left her behind. Go go find her.
How's that for progress? We've got the entire front of the cabin all meshed up and it looks like we did nothing. But if you look really closely, you can see that the wire mesh is tucked between the logs on an angle that'll shed water for years to come. What do you think, Don? It's good. It's good? It's good. No mice are getting in. Not this way. Not this way. They have to go from underneath or go through the door. They'll find their way in. Mice have a have a uncanny ability to get in everywhere. That's a lot of mesh. How are your fingers? Did you get any blood? Uh, a little, little bit of blood? A little bit of blood. A little bit of blood. I got myself and Don got fish hooked in his arm and he was stuck. I had to rescue him. I was going to film it, but I thought that was going to be cruel. So I didn't. I just took him out and he got like wedged in between. It was, it was not good. Stuff's like, it's like working with razor blades. It's fun stuff. Don's a tough guy. Anyways, we're going to continue on doing this mesh all the way around. We're going to spare you the trouble of watching it um, because, yeah, you guys don't have to watch it too. We just have to, I'll show it to you when it's all done and it'll look very much the same as when we started, but <laughs> but the mortar will have something to attach to. The chinking, the chinking will, will have a good spot. What I was gonna say is the this mesh is actually used for many different things besides just chinking. It's the actual, they use it as decoupling membrane for uh, ceramic tile. They put it underneath ceramic tile and then they put a mortar bed on top of it and they lay ceramic tile. Uh, they also use it for patching walls like plaster and lath. This is the lath part of it. Had this stuff outside for years and it doesn't rust so even if it doesn't get completely covered with uh, mortar and uh, embedded it uh, it'll still not rust not that not that expensive either it used to be about three bucks a sheet it's actually tripled but still it's still cheaper than most everything else oh, oh. sorry buddy did i wake you up oh there's the babies they look like they're hungry they're really ugly. Yeah, they're not very cute. Robin babies are not very cute. Anyways, these guys, these guys have been along for the ride. That little guy or girl, I guess it's a girl. That little girl up there is, uh, is our resident uh, Robin and she's built a nest right where we're building. So I guess it's comfortable for a Robin to build there. So they, they've, they've been, I've been watching them grow. They were eggs a while ago and now they're They've, uh, they've hatched and they've got little chicks up there, which, man, they're ugly. Not like a, not like a chicken. Sh should eat those things instead of chickens. Anyways, I'm sure they'll, they'll be fine. We just, uh, you know, they're used to the noise by now. They just built on a construction site. Well, good morning again, guys. This is day two of the wire meshing project on the log cabin. We've got an early start today. And I think today we're making lunch at the forest. So we've got to get our fire started because we need a pretty good gold ped in order to cook. We're gonna, my plan today is to actually show you the difference between free range farm fresh eggs and ones you buy at the store. So we're gonna do a little compare and contrast. We've got our mm, grill we're gonna set up. We're gonna cook some eggs on an open fire, which I've, I've never tried. Cooking eggs is kind of a delicate, difficult thing when you have a, you know, especially like a, a uh, stainless steel pan. It's uh, not necessarily the easiest thing. It's usually, you know, best to do with a Teflon pan. So we're gonna give it a whirl, see how it works. And uh, if it doesn't work, we're just eating English muffin. Right, Don? Exactly. Hmm. What you got there, Don? It's got a chisel. Got a chisel, it's got a little bit of bark left on that it's one some, log. Uh, some stubborn bark. All bark is stubborn. So while Don deals with that one extra log that's right at the top in a kind of an awkward position, I'm gonna go see what uh, my brother's up to. He's been working on a little special project. Actually, I helped him out when he first came over with this idea. And his idea was to uh, <clears throat> yeah, feed the fish in a relatively unconventional way. And what he chose to do was take 30 pounds of rotting meat and hang it above the pond over there. Probably about, about a week. It smells pretty ripe and it's rather gross. You can check him out on his channel, Wooded Beardsman. He's got the video, the ultimate maggot feeder. It's the ultimate stinky, stinky thing. How, how's, it's gross, man. What? It's not that bad. How, yeah, it's gross. How does it work? It smells We're, like productivity. We're turning uh, 
We're turning the cycle of life around in a circle from gross carp meat to delicious trout meat. So yeah, it's a box suspended over the pond and it's dropping maggots down and it smells terrible. We're turning it over and cycle of life. It's just really quick cycle. All right, well, if you're interested in that sort of thing, he's got a like a whole, what is it, like a one hour special? No, it's a 30 minute special. A thir 30 minute special on growing maggots from... It's the ultimate, the ultimate maggot feeder. I've done this three times already. I did one in the other pond with a bucket. I did it out in nature with a bucket, but I went out to the, like to try it on wild fish to see if I can concentrate them. This is the third time. This is, this is the ultimate one because it can be refreshed. That's the idea. It's like you don't have to go in the water and you just keep, keep leveling Keep it. adding more rotting meat. We need more water depth here, more fish. There's only four in here, so. Well, did you start digging? You should dig. I was thinking about it. I'm just surveying the lands here because there's probably maybe two more weeks left on these fish and then the water level is going to be a little low. Well, once the fish are out, we can work on the pond. So they got the frogs. The frogs are in full swig. The uh, tadpoles are the tadpoles are plentiful in there. Yeah, let the tadpoles get. Yeah. Rent's uh, getting sharp on them. They got to go out yeah. in the woods. And then uh, we'll take the fish out and eat them. Sounds like a plan. Farm fresh egg, store-bought egg, and they're both extra large eggs. This one on the, is it my right, your left, is probably a double yoker. So it's it's got some it's got some size to it. Uh, we're gonna check color, consistency. Usually the uh, the store-bought eggs are runnier, um, and the yolks don't uh, they don't stay proud. The farm fresh eggs tend to stay up really tall. So let's get these guys on the grill. I'm getting hungry. Don, you getting hungry? Getting hungry. Sounds like. I'm tired of peeling bark. Let's make some egg sandwiches. We're, we're trying out this, this griddle for the first time. So please bear with us. There's probably a slight learning curve on this. Uh, so we're gonna use some oil, lots and lots of oil. My brother's gonna help me because I don't cook on the fire very often. Wait, right, Chris, what's our plan here? Lots of oil? I don't know if it's gonna work, to be what? honest. I would have went with cast iron, but you got you got the the home stuff. That's right. I grabbed it. Well, I, I don't have a metal one. <laughs> That's gonna go good with the fire. No, no. You just gotta do it quick. I don't know. Do it quick. I say if you if the egg does the stick, you'll be good. But okay, so we're gonna we're gonna add lots of oil and we're gonna maybe saute this egg. Is, uh, that, might, is that the word? It might be scrambled fried. Scrambled fried. That's okay too. It might be burnt. We're not gonna burn it. I don't know. Chris is an expert at cooking on fire. That's why I consult with the experts. I, I like I said, I rarely cook. But I have confidence that this griddle is going to work well. Or <laughs> we're going to fail spectacularly. Oh, look at that. It looks fine. First step. Oh, yeah. Farm brush. Oh, a double yoker. How many are you going to have? Okay, Donnie, you want one? Chris doesn't eat one. I don't know, I think that's working pretty good. I'm, I'm impressed with that. That's, uh, that's excellent. I think the idea is to keep it up high, keep it heat down low and lots and lots of oil. It's on fire. Okay, who wants one? Donnie? Don? Careful, it's hot. Yeah, thank you very much. It's burning. Really good. I haven't even tried it yet, and I'm considering that a success. We didn't bake the eggs to that grill. That grill worked amazing. If you guys want to check them out, the m-usa.com, you can check up those. That's a griddle, but they do have other grills for uh, cooking burgers open at the bottom, but that one's the griddle. That, one's, that works actually really well. And if you look in the description, there's a discount code to get, I believe 10% off the grill. So take a look down below in the comments. You can get yourself a deal on that guy. Donnie, Donnie and Don came to watch, but then they get fed, right? Excellent, Kevin. Good job. I can't tell if this is the farm fresh egg or the store-bought egg. Needless to say, they're very similar. 
they were similar. You couldn't really tell. It was too bright. Anyway, so that's... Oh, yeah, that's where it's at. With a ham, egg, butter, English muffin. Mmm, delicious. What you got there? The beaver burger? Beaver burger. Oh. Why didn't you tell me you had beaver burgers? I only had one. You said you wanted an egg sandwich. So. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's true. And this is the deal breaker right there. What's that? No. Oh, gluten free. I know. Gotta adapt. Do you ever feel like there's a man in the hat watching you? I don't know what that is. You don't know what that is? No. I'm sure in the comments people are going to say there looks like there's a man in the hat over there looking at you. He keeps sneaking up on me. <laughs> it feels like somebody's looking over my shoulder all the time. I don't have my knife with me. Uh -oh. I think I do, but it's always funny to make the joke about popping your cherry when you eat the beaver. <laughs> cherry tomatoes, beaver burger. There's a beaver down there. The neighbor said. Ooh. But I don't think he wants to let me trap it yet. So... We'll see. So let's let's take a like, bite of the beaver burger. Why didn't you want an egg sandwich? People want to know. They do? Yeah, why why didn't you eat an egg sandwich? I didn't, I'm allergic, I think. You're allergic to eggs and bread? <laughs> you know, lots of and things. And cheese. Lots of things. <laughs> He's allergic to the entire ingredient list of my egg sandwich. Pretty much. Yeah. Put some, uh, yeah, yeah, everything. It's all the main things that make make for a bad eating experience. So this beaver you caught yourself? Caught it, ground it, everything. You waiting for a bite? <laughs> yeah, go for it. You're gonna make a mess. It's good. It's good. It's better than medicine. Yeah, I agree. It, I'm it's... gonna collect every beaver I get in the fall. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna grind it all up. I'm gonna eat burgers, beaver burgers for life. It's my new thing. It's good. It's really good. You can actually tune into Chris's channel, and there is, uh, there's a video of me eating beaver burger, and it's by far the best burger I've ever had. It was cut with bacon. It was beaver and bacon and it was delicious. And wild the, leeks. Wild leeks. The wild leeks I think added a lot to it. It was delicious. There's a video on his channel if you if you search you can see me eating beaver. Ramps. Ramps. Leeks. Leeks. Oh they're called ramps. I guess the ramps. Ramps is the American version of leeks. Lost my cherry. Oh you lost your cherry. <laughs> All right let's uh we gotta get some stuff going. We gotta like this is this has been a chore. We're trying to break it up with something more interesting because we're we're just again we're we're nailing in this wire mesh. You can't even you can't even see what we're doing. Well, you can see when you well in this close, but from afar you can't actually tell what we're doing. This is this is the mesh that's gonna hold all of the cement inside the logs. So we've got to go around every single log and nail off every single inch of the wire lath in order to give us long lasting chinking. We've got two more sides to do. I've got a little bit of blood left. By blood, this stuff is sharp. Don's lost a little bit of blood. We're still going. We've got a little bit of bark left to take off on that thing. We're gonna get, uh, get this thing done. Well guys, we're moving right along here. We have all our wire mesh on the outside done. It took it exactly, well, maybe not exactly, but it took about 16 man hours of time in order to put mesh on every single crack and every single log and around every single butt corner on this entire cabin, which in reality isn't terrible. It's, you know, it's a modern solution to, to the chinking problem. Got nails up and bottom, ties everything together. We've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a fire going. We're cleaning up the the all the debris that's laying around. It's also good for keep the mosquitoes away because it kind of gives a little bit of smoke, and the mosquitoes don't like the smoke, so they just kind of go away. So we've got the inside to do. Got my motivated crew. Got Chris there. He's motivated. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. This is like the 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 kind of stuff you kind of want to just get done and forget that you ever did it. I don't. Uh, I <laughs> don't recommend doing this. It's it's a lot of work. It's the right way to do it, but it is a lot of work. So we're just going to get through it. We're going to get through it, right, Chris? Come on, show me some positivity. Or we could... Or we could what? Just go fishing. Live as, as is. Just go as is? Yeah, and keep the big bugs out. Like the, the squirrels? A little drafty, but... Yeah, it's uh, it'll keep the really big ones out, like the cicadas. The cicadas will stay out and the giant moths and the June bugs maybe. But the mosquitoes have got free range through those mesh. Maybe go tighter mesh. Tighter with we should pack it with steel wool on the inside. Drafty. Drafty. It's fresh. Fresh. You don't need an HRV in this thing. It's a uh, 
It's got its own heat recovery. Maybe not heat recovery. It's got its own ventilation. Anyway, let's get the inside done. Come on, let's get this done. Look at us go. Waiting for you to lead the way. <laughs> lead the charge! More wire mesh. All of the wire mesh. Well, we gave her the old college try. We ended up running out of wire lath for the inside. We've almost got it done. We probably need two more sheets. Uh, so we'll pick those up later and uh, finish off the inside. Next step is the chinking of the actual adding the cement to the between the wire mesh. And that'll be, I think that'll be another part because we're kind of running log on this one. We're running log or log. Running a little long. So anyways, thanks for joining me and join me on the next one.